Howdy doody, my name is Susie and on my channel I share with you recipes and tutorials of things that I'm interested in using in my home, things that I've made, I've tested them out on friends and family, and things that I really love to use in my everyday living. And these are the things that I actually share with you in these videos. So I hope you find them as useful and practical and some of them delicious as I do. Now today I wanted to cover how to make a simple salve using propolis. But first of all, I wanted to let you know so what, what is propolis? What are its benefits? and how to make a salve so that you can use it topically, which has tremendous healing benefits on wounds, scrapes, scratches, etc. It's a really wonderful salve to have in your medicine cabinet. So what is propolis? And propolis is a combination of tree resins and saps and other plant materials that the honeybee will scrape and collect and take back to its nest, the beehive, and they will use it to totally encapsulate the nest, creating an insulated barrier, which is also known as a propolis envelope. Now, propolis may be also known as bee glue. So this is so sticky that it actually requires a second worker bee to assist the first bee with removing it from its hind legs. But for commercial use, the beekeeper needs to buy propolis traps to recreate the similar environment so that the bees produce this propolis in a commercial beehive box. They then scrape it and they sell it to the public in the form of these bits and pieces and scrapings. And this is a brown propolis, which I collected from my local beekeeper. I actually had to do a bit of a search to find out which one of my beekeepers actually sold propolis because not every beekeeper will have the propolis traps. So, but I'm sure you can also buy the propolis online. Although it's always nice to support your local beekeeper. It smells, it smells like a sweet wax. And that's because the raw propolis is actually made up of about 50% resins, 30% beeswax, 10% essential oils, 5% pollen, and 5% other plant material. And that's an approximate. Um, you cannot get or duplicate the identical propolis from every single batch. So the propolis composition is really determined by the prominent plants in the region where the honeybees are collecting it. However, the principal properties of the propolis are similar. Now there are also two other varieties of propolis which I believe come from Brazil and that's a red propolis and a green propolis and again those propolis they have the same benefits with some additional differences because of the type of sap and resins that the bees are collecting in those specific areas. But the wonderful properties of the propolis is that it is an antibacterial, antifungal, antioxidant, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory properties. So it is packed with vitamins and minerals, and I think it carries almost every vitamin that there is, with the exception of a few. And if you're interested in finding out more about the benefits and the composition of propolis, I actually did a lot of research through the University of uh, Minnesota, which actually has a bee lab where they do um, tests on propolis and other bee products. So that's really interesting to take a look at that. The only thing that you need in order to make this propolis is going to be some oil. And I'm using sunflower oil because it has the additional vitamin E, but you can use olive oil, any other types of oil. You also want to try and get an organic oil because this is a healing product that you're making so you want it to be as pure as possible. You're also going to need a little bit of vodka and I used the Michael Moore method where the vodka is the intermediary. It actually allows the herb or the product that you're trying to infuse in oil open up and give up some of its properties. It also adds an additional layer of protection so it enables you to keep yourself longer. You're also going to need some little um, containers 
it's always best to keep um, your infused oils in a dark glass or a dark place. So that's why I've got the little tins. So we're going to infuse our oil using the hot bath system. So this is a, a double boiler. I'm using the crock pot because it's very difficult to maintain a low temperature using a double boiler on the stove. The key thing is that your oil, you do not want your oil to reach any more than 122 degrees because if you if it goes beyond that temperature, it will start to destroy all those beneficial properties that we're trying to capture so that we can use. So you have to keep the oil under 122 degrees. Now, I had to test out my crock pot to make sure that I was not going to exceed 122 degrees with my propolis. So a way to test your crock pot to make sure that your oil does not exceed 122 degrees is by getting your 500 ml jar and I filled it up enough oil to replicate what I'm going to be infusing. So in this case, eight ounces of oil, one ounce of the propolis. So I'm gonna have a volume of nine ounces. So I just filled it up nine ounces of regular cooking oil, remember this is to test, and I put it in my four cup measuring cup, and then I filled up my measuring cup with enough water just to cover the oil. Then I took that and I put it in my crock pot, and I did the same thing with my crock pot. I filled it up with enough water just to come a little bit above the line of the water in the measuring cup. So I turned my crock pot on low, I put the lid on and I waited about an hour. I removed the lid once I saw all the steam, I took the temperature and then I waited another half hour and I took the temperature again and then I waited another half hour and I took the temperature again. Once I knew that the temperature was steady, then I added my water with my oil to the crock pot. I added that to the crock pot and then I waited another hour. And then at the end of my timer, I took the temperature of the water of the crock pot, which was 133 degrees. I took the temperature of the water inside my cup and that was 122 degrees. And then I took the temperature of my oil. Make sure you wipe your, so you don't get water in your oil. And then I took the temperature of my oil and it was 116, but I wasn't sure yet. So I waited another half hour to make sure that those temperatures did not change and they didn't. So now I know that for this amount of oil, I know the quantities I'm going to use in water and I know that it's safe to infuse any oil in the future using this method because I know exactly how hot my crock pot gets. So that's how you can figure out what the temperature is going to be for your crock pot. So then I took my half ounce of vodka, I added it to my jar, and I sterilized my jar. And then I took my propolis, I added it to the vodka, I sealed it up, and I made sure that the vodka moistened the propolis like this. And I just let it sit overnight. Now the propolis, because it's resin and beeswax in it, it is oil soluble and it is also alcohol soluble, which is how they make the tinctures and some of the other um, products using propolis. But I will tell you that in the morning, the propolis becomes very hard and um, into one big clump, which is fine because we're going to add our oil directly to this. So 24 hours later, and I am actually gonna wait 24 hours, but I'm just gonna pretend I'm doing it now. So 24 hours later, I come in and I add my eight ounces of sunflower oil to the jar. And with the lid on, and I make this with the lid on for two reasons. It held 
the 116 degree temperature of my oil, it also prevented any splatters of water dropping into my oil. You do not want to get any water into your oil. And I put it in my double boiler, in my crock pot, and I timed it for four hours. So I've heated up my water, and now I'm going to test the temperature. So it's going up slightly. I have done this in the past, and my crock pot water was 133. So it's around that temperature. Now I'm going to test the water in my measuring cup. That's 122.3. And now I'm going to dry this off, and I'm going to test the heat of my oil. So I removed the lid, and I just kept the lid on the jar just to make sure that I didn't get any water in my oil. So now I'm just going to test the heat of the oil. Okay, the oil is sitting at 116 degrees. So I know I can let it go for four hours of infusing. And at this point, if I leave the lid off, I think the temperature is going to drop. So I'm just going to put my lid on just loosely to hold in that heat and to protect my oil from getting any drops of water. So in four hours, I'll let you know what this turns out like. So it's been two hours and I've been stirring it off and on. You can see how the oil is starting to take on some of that color. This is what the finished propolis turns out like. It becomes a creamy, not the texture of a salve because there isn't enough beeswax in it, but the texture of an ointment. So in two more hours, I'll let you know what it looks like. So it's been four hours. And I'm just going to gently remove this. Let's take a look. The color has definitely darkened, so it's deepened. Give it a little swirl. You can see that propolis is settled on the bottom. So I'm gonna give it another little swirl just to get a little, little bit more extract out of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let it sit and cool for a few minutes until all the propolis settles on the bottom. And in four hours, This is what I got. Now the consistency of your propolis salve is going to be different from batch to batch because the amount of the beeswax in each batch is going to vary, but that doesn't really matter. So instead of straining, and I never strained, um, I've never strained my propolis salve, you don't need to strain it because if you let it sit, as you can see, as you can see, the propolis settles to the bottom. So it's very yourself into your containers. So you just take a little bit of alcohol, like I said, and you wanna make sure that everything is sanitized before you add your products. You go through so much trouble making them, you want to make sure that you're preserving them as long as you possibly can. So it's much easier when this is in an oil form to pour it out. But if you, so you pour it out and you let it sit. And this is poured out yesterday in an oil form. And you can see it's soft, it moves, but it's got uh, enough body that it is a very, very soft sound. And it is amazing, you will see results in 24 hours. This, so the way to use it is just to apply it topically to your wound. Remember, you don't want to stick your fingers in it. I use a Q-tip every time I need to use some of the self, and then I just topically apply it to the wound. If you have a wound that is very sore and you don't want to get 
anything touching it, then what I do is I take a small piece of gauze, large enough to cover the wound, I apply the propolis to the gauze, and then I apply the gauze to the wound and wrap it up. At least that's what I've done with Chester, my dog, and it works really great. It's also safe if he decides to lick his paw, and he might because it does smell uh, sweet and a little bit like honey. So this is great for pets. It's wonderful for people. So this is a must have in my medicine cabinet. I am so impressed with the healing properties. Let me show you some before and afters. These are shots within 24 hours of applying the propolis. You can see the difference before and after. It's really, really remarkable. So I I also forgot to mention that once you make your propolis, you can potentially reuse the propolis that's left at the bottom of your jar. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to, and maybe I'll be able to update you on the next video. So I hope that you try this recipe, and if you like it, I hope you share it. If you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. If you like this video, I hope you give me a like, and all is well in the world. So happy self making. We'll see you next time. Enjoy.